Thanks for joining me for this visit to the Scripps Aviary at the San Diego Zoo. The original incarnation of the aviary was unveiled in 1923 and at that time was the tallest of its kind. I'm going to walk you through some of the aviary history and identify the birds we will encounter. Feel free to turn off the audio and turn on closed captions if you would prefer to observe the birds without narration. The aviary, which is nested in Gorilla Tropics, is multi-leveled and has several different entrances and exits. The pool just inside the entrance to the upper tier is a perfect place to catch some of the larger birds, like these great blue turacos. The 2002 full species list of the San Diego Zoo lists 37 different bird species in Scripps Aviary. We will see most but not all of these birds in the aviary on this tour. Many of the birds are hard to observe because there are plenty of places off the path for them to hang out. If you do a quick walk through the aviary on a visit to the zoo, you couldn't be blamed for thinking it was practically empty. With a little patience, however, and a little luck, you will find the aviary teeming with a wide variety of beautiful birds. The original 95-foot-tall aviary cage, built in 1923, was not a walkthrough structure. It wasn't converted into a walkthrough aviary until 1958. It was further renovated to its current form in 1991. The African spoonbill is another of the larger birds in the aviary. It's a wading bird inhabiting marshy wetlands across Africa and Madagascar, feeding in the shallow water on various fish, crustaceans, and mollusks. This one is sharing the pool with the southern bald ibis, a grassland or semi-desert bird of southern Africa. They're similar in size to the great blue turaco. The white-crowned robin chat is native to dry savanna and tropical or subtropical moist shrubland in numerous African countries. This one's overlooking the pool, which is now hosting the African open-bill stork. This stork is the largest bird in the Scripps aviary, at 80 to 94 centimeters in length. Its name is derived from the gap between its upper and lower mandibles, which allows it to grasp snails and other mollusks without dropping them. The African open bill is widely distributed across Sub-Saharan Africa and Western Madagascar. If you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Now let's begin to head down the path from the pond towards the lower section of the upper aviary. There are some nice benches along the path for relaxing and taking in the scenery. We'll first come across a purple starling, followed by a small group of splendid starlings. The purple starling is resident to tropical Africa, from Senegal and North Zaire, east to Sudan and West Kenya. The southern laughing dove is a common and widespread species in scrub, dry farmland, and in areas of human habitation often become very tame. These small short-tailed starlings have a distinctive plumage pattern with black heads and iridescent blue to green back, upper breast, wings, and tail. The belly is red-orange and separated from the blue breast by a white bar. The superb starling lives in savanna, in thornbrush and acacia arid areas, open woodland, lakeshore woodlands, gardens, and cultivated fields.
The Tevetta weaver is found on the African savanna in Kenya and Tanzania. The blue-headed wood dove is widespread across African tropical rainforest. The Great Blue Turaco, at 70 to 76 centimeters in length, is the largest of the Turaco species, but not the largest of the birds in the Scripps aviary. They inhabit a wide range of African tropical rainforest. If you get lucky, you can catch them in the pond or sometimes lurking high in the canopy. As you make your way further down the path, you will come to some bird feeding areas. Usually you will find some small birds here, like the doves and weavers, but I got lucky to catch the great blue turaco here. The Adamawa turtle dove sits at the same feeder. These doves are native to Cameroon, West Chad, Senegal, and Mali. Again, on the feeder we find the African Golden Oriole. These striking yellow and black birds live in thick brush and other well-wooded areas south of the Saharan Desert. Trading places with the Golden Oriole are the African Olive Pigeon and Bruce's Green Pigeon. The African Olive Pigeon is a common bird in eastern and southern Africa from Ethiopia to the Cape. Bruce's Green Pigeon can be found in many African countries. It has a very specialized diet that consists of eating the fruit of a single species of fig tree. The blue-naped mouse bird is listed as one of the species in the Scripps aviary, but in numerous visits I have yet to see it. It can be found more easily in the Africa rocks aviary, where I was able to catch up with it for this video shoot. The magpie shrike. This commonly found bird is native to grasslands of eastern and southern Africa. Oh boy, cross your wings over your throat if you need help. Well, I guess he's okay. This is the African darter, a water bird of sub-Saharan Africa and Iraq. Unlike other water birds, the feathers of the darter do not contain any oil and are not waterproof. This makes them less buoyant and great divers. As a result, however, they can be found drying their wings off by the side of the water, as this one was when I caught up with him.
the black crake is a water bird of sub-Saharan Africa. This one is sharing the pond with the Makoa duck. In the same pond here, we see the hammercock. This water bird is found in Africa, Madagascar, and Arabia. It has two claims to fame, being the world's smallest species of stork and building the largest roofed nests of any birds. Their nests can be up to 6.5 feet wide, 6.5 feet deep, and over 100 pounds. The tambourine dove is another common pigeon found in sub-Saharan Africa. There is no real difference between a pigeon and a dove. Pigeon is a French word, while dove is English. Here we find two other birds that I have only caught up with in Africa rocks, the white-bellied go-away bird and the white-headed buffalo weaver. These two seem to be close. We caught a brief glimpse of the white-bellied go-away bird earlier on sharing the pool with the great blue turaco. Yeah.